Um, so could you start off by telling us a little bit about the programme on Friday and how and why it was put together? Well, mainly it's the celebration of the two composers this year, Gustav Mahler and Franz Liszt. Um, 100th anniversary of Mahler's, Mahler's death. Mm -hmm. Also 150th anniversary of his birth. It started last year. So the, is it like a double anniversary in case of Mahler. And uh, 200 years of Franz Liszt, mm -hmm. late in the autumn. Um, and I thought these two composers are in very strongly interconnected. They have a lot more in common than people usually assume. And um, OAE would be a perfect orchestra to explore these um, connections. And obviously, the person who connected Mahler and Liszt more than anybody else was Richard Wagner. We decided to start the program with Wagner's latest work, Parsifal, yeah. the prelude for Parsifal, because in a way it both reflected over all the achievements of the music of the 19th century, but also showed the way into the 20th century. You, you mentioned that you thought the OE would be a good partner for, these, for this program. Um, it's quite unusual for the OE to be playing music from this period, so why, why the OE and what do you think the orchestra can bring to this repertoire? Well, first of all, the instruments. Um, mainly and predominantly it's the instruments, and that's what I was so interested in, hearing this music on the instruments, either made at the time when, when the pieces were written or the copies of those instruments. Uh, because I, I'm absolutely convinced that composers uh, always knew best what the instruments they were writing for were capable of. And obviously today with the modern symphony orchestras we, uh, we, we are used um, a rather uniform, very polished, very brilliant and very big sound of the orchestra, which doesn't always uh, reflect correctly the palette of colours uh, which the composers obviously had in mind when writing the pieces. Um, and because all four pieces uh, on this programme um, thrive on orchestral colours. Uh, I wondered if you remember how you first kind of met the OEE where it was and if that was your first time you, you conducted a period instrument orchestra and what, what your immediate reaction was? Well, meeting OE um, on the platform happened ten years ago. Uh, obviously I've heard them before. That wasn't the first period the orchestra uh, for me to conduct. I had um, one experience with the a um, Norwegian Baroque orchestra back in 1998. Um, but that was a completely different um, repertoire. That was French Baroque and it was a part of a theatrical project. So uh, I had some experience with uh, period orchestras, but obviously um, with the OEE and especially moving into the uh, repertoire span, let's say, between Haydn and Brahms um, on the period instruments was, was a completely new experience to me. And I always found the OAE extremely open-minded and very curious to learn more than they already knew, although they had quite a lot to say about the music they were playing already. Then they had a, a very rich and long experience. But I always uh, found our collaboration um, mutually fruitful from, from the very, very first time I appeared in front of them. Just more generally, why do you think classical music is still important and kind of relevant to people today? Why is classical art still important and relevant to us today? Why are we still reading Shakespeare? Why are we still reading Tolstoy? Why are we still uh, going to see uh, Leonardo's paintings or Michelangelo's frescoes? I don't know. All I know is that it is important, it is essential to us. There is such an emotional 
intellectual, spiritual um, richness contained in those works. We actually don't need classical art to survive on the planet. It's not the same as food or drink or fresh air. But there must be some kind of um, sixth or seventh sense in us which craves this spiritual food. Uh, so tonight you'll be conducting the orchestra in one of our night shift concerts, which I think you've done quite a few of now. I think you're our most regular conductor at the night shift. Um, what do you enjoy about the events and, and how does the dynamic between the orchestra and the audience change at night shift events? Well, it's exactly this changing dynamic between the orchestra and the audience which I, I'm enjoying most. Uh, and also the fact that we are uh, possibly introducing this music to people who have never in their lives heard any note of classical music, or certainly not listened to it uh, attentively. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a real pioneer work the orchestra is um, accomplishing there. But also the audience, because for me the, the, the most um, important essential difference between listening to music in, in, in a concert and listening at home um, on an iPod or on a CD drive is that in concert, you, as a listener, you are also contributing to the quality of the performance. Sometimes unknowingly or unwillingly, but you do. Um, because it's, it's all this triangle. The music, the performer, the listener. And a social experience as well as an aesthetic one. Um, and when experiencing music with other people next to you, um, the, the, the feelings uh, you are experiencing as a listener can become much stronger, any kind of feelings. We even know of the cases when uh, works of art have provoked uh, social revolutions. Not, not that I'm, I'm wishing for another revolution to happen tonight or at any of our night shift concerts, but I just think um, any, anything we do consciously and actively uh, changes our structure and by changing ourselves we are changing the world. So I, I can only welcome more people coming to our night shift concerts and I'm very, very happy to hear that tonight's concert is sold out. Um, and I hope that we can sow the seeds of curiosity in people's minds, hearts and ears. And even if they won't become classical music fans, uh, they will take something with them home, something which will inspire their personal exploration of this infinitely rich world. Um, and our last question was sent in by um, an audience member. Um, and your father was a conductor, I believe, as well. He still is. He still is, yes. Um, and just wondering, you, the question was, was there a point when you watched your father conduct when you thought that you would do things slightly differently? Can you identify a point when you thought you'd like to do it as well? Or? Well, that came much later. Uh, that came in, in the age when I was already arrogant enough to assume uh, that uh, I can do it myself. Uh, when I was a kid, I was just watching him with awe and um, huge amount of respect, but also I was completely puzzled because I couldn't understand how he was doing it. I thought he, he would uh, memorize all the movements in, in front of the mirror somehow, because then, you know, every movement, I thought, meant something very specific to the musicians, and if he made a wrong move, uh, the wrong notes would come out. That, that was my first impression of a conductor's work. Then, later on, when, when I started becoming a professional musician myself, uh, my hearing uh, also started changing. I became more critical. And um, for a while my father even used it uh, for both 
mine and his benefit because he used me as his assistant. So I was officially allowed to come and tell him all my points of criticism. But then of course there came a point where I just needed to completely separate myself from uh, his um, musical personality and find my own way. Um, so now we, we have, I mean we have still the father-son relationship but we also have this uh, collegial relationship which is rather unusual. And are any of your children saying, showing signs of interest in the profession? Well, my son is, but he's uh, two uh, and four months, and I think he he is mostly interested in my baton and in extracting the baton from from the footlar. Uh, every morning, I have to I have to watch where, where my baton has disappeared. Um, but he's definitely very musical, and God knows what will become of him. I always say the musical children. Is is a very good sign uh, in in terms of their um, emotional uh, development, but they may as well become very good uh, physicians or scientists. It, it isn't said that uh, a, a musical child should necessarily become a professional musician. Great, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thanks. Brilliant, no, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers.